What's going on guys and welcome back to another exciting LumaFusion tutorial. In this video, we are going to color grade S-Log. And S-Log is a Sony picture profile and we're gonna color grade the S-Log 2 picture profile shot on the Sony A6300. And uh, we're gonna come back to that in, uh, in a bit. But first, a short Q&A because you guys have been hanging out there for, uh, for some time now. I haven't really had uh, the opportunity to do the answers for the questions that you uh, put out on the community tab. So for the, the rest of you watching which haven't put out any questions, keep an eye out for the community tab as well because I always ask for Q and A's there. So if you have any questions about anything related to filmmaking or LumaFusion or anything, you can leave all your questions there. I'll be sure to answer as many of them as possible to also keep the videos shorter. So I, I, I'll try to answer as many as I can. So without further ado, let's get into the questions. So the first question here is from Tommy Gitoa. And my question is more on your channel growth. I think mainly because you continue to put out great content. Thank you. Uh, but is there any other methods that you think has helped you? Well, I just made a video on this, which you can go and check out as well. It is up here somewhere. And also in the description below, it is a video on my 10 tips to grow your YouTube channel and to be consistent on YouTube in 2020. And it's all the steps that I followed myself that I figured out and also the way that I still are doing it. And if you're really serious about YouTube and you really want to grow your channel, make sure to check out that video because there is some really awesome tips in there which you probably haven't heard anywhere else, I guess. Maybe, maybe. My name is Vizal and I'm your big fan. Thank you. I am a YouTuber not on this account and make PUBG Mobile funny videos. So I have to use a lot of sound effects and memes video. So please tell me how to manage all my data for LumaFusion to get all of them easily and fast. I also made a video on this earlier. This is the Samsung SSD, uh, let's see, this one, to basically have full control inside LumaFusion when you are editing, when it comes to sound effects and, and LUTs and video files and all that. If you use an SSD like this, also affiliate link in the description below if you want to get something like this. When you are using something like that with LumaFusion, there you save so much space and the workflow is so much faster because it's reading faster, so everything is coming to your timeline faster once you drop it on your timeline. Yes. So if you want to learn more about that and to get a better answer, more longer in that answer, you can check out that video as well. I make sure to link it down in the description below. Next one is e-bike photographer. I could use some tips on efficiently collecting a B-roll. I often find myself short on when it comes to the editing time. When I find myself in a position where I think I got that's it, I have everything I need. I still continue to shoot because I know per of personal experience when it comes to the editing part and when I'm gonna sit down and edit the video and there's always some footage that I wish that I shot. So I always take my time, take some extra time and just film until you don't have any memory left on your SD card or micro SD card when you're out shooting. And if that is the, the last place you're gonna shoot and then you're gonna go home, make sure that you empty everything, battery, SD card, everything, so that you have enough footage when you are going to sit down and edit your video. Okay, so the last one here now is from ICFPV. How much of your total vlog is done using your iPad? What other mobile apps do you use in conjunction with LumaFusion? I would say most of the time I'm editing in LumaFusion and even the B-rolls I and the cinematic videos I edit in LumaFusion. I really want to edit them on my computer because of warp stabilization because so proper speed ramping and all of those goodies. But if we can find 
or if I can find a really good way of utilizing LumaFusion as it is now and then teach you guys that before we see the update on speed ramping, stabilization and so on because we don't really know when that is coming. So if I can utilize everything inside of LumaFusion and teach you that, I think I think I'm more happy with myself when I'm doing that. So that's one of the main drives to continue editing everything in LumaFusion as well. And when it comes to the this other apps that I use with LumaFusion, I would say Lightroom and Affinity Photo. Lightroom for uh, the thumbnails, as well as Affinity Photo for some tweaks here and there. And color grading, I used to make LUTs in, in Affinity Photo for my LumaFusion videos, but now after you, or when you see this video, you will understand that a lot of my videos are actually color graded within LumaFusion because it's easier, faster, and I kind of have more control. And with that said, I think it's time to jump over to the video now because this Q&A is um, turned out to be a little bit longer than expected. So uh, let's grade some footage. So once we get over to LumaFusion, you can see that we have the same clip here as you saw in the intro of the video. And this is shot with the Sony a6300 and the profile used was S-Log2. So we're just going to jump into the first clip here and we're going to do some color grading to this and then the next one here as well. And you can see how we can color grade S-Log inside of LumaFusion to make it look really awesome. So we're going to go into edit on the first clip here by double tapping. And the only thing we have to add is the color presets original. This is already built into LumaFusion. And this is the first one here under the first icon to the left. So we're going to tap on that. And here you will see that you get a bunch of different sliders, which you can adjust. And we're simply going to go from bottom to top. And the reason why we do this is because we're going to change the primary color of our video by changing the hue, as you can see here. And uh, we're going to change the gamma maybe a little bit later after we got uh, deeper into the grading part. And we're going to change some shadows here and we're going to end by adjusting the levels here. And once we're done with the levels here, we can go back to the different sliders here and we can adjust and make some tweaks here and there if it's needed and if you want to make it. Perfect. So we're going to go down to the bottom here and we're simply going to start by taking the hue over to the right side. So th the only thing you want to use the hue for is teal and orange and, and uh, green, basically. So teal and orange is left towards the minus side and green is towards the plus side on the right. So we're going to take this first one here and we're going to take it to somewhere around there, 421. Then we're going to go over to shadow amount. And if we take the shadow mount uh, to the right here towards the plus side, you will see that we wash out a lot of the uh, blackness or the black spots inside the video file. But if we go over to the left side here, you will see that the video and, and the color grading is making the, the video pop a little bit more. And that is because we are bringing out more of the shadows within the video. So this is what it is when it's not adjusted and we take it down and you can see that the video is popping a tiny bit more than with this setting on zero. And the next thing you want to do to make this pop even more, uh, the first color grading we're going to make here now is a color pop, which will bring more life to the, uh, the overall video or the image, whatever you are color grading inside of LumaFusion. And we're simply going to take the saturation up to 1.3. And as you can see now, we brought a lot more color into the green parts here and the brown on the building here in the middle as well. And now that we put the saturation to 150, that means we can control the colors and the saturation of the colors with the vibrance. So if we take the vibrance down, you will see that we kind of flatten out the colors a little bit. There's not much saturation is this in this image right now. So if we take a look before and after, you see the green is getting kind of darker but for this first one here we're going to take the vibrance and we're actually going to make it a little bit higher just like that to a 0 0.20 so now if we take a look before and after you can see that the colors are popping a lot more in this uh, uh, image right here the next thing we're going to do is to go over to the uh, levels here and we're going to take the right one which is the highlights and we're going to take it a little bit up just like that 
And the next thing we can do is to take either one of these two here, the next to the middle, and that we can take and drag those closer to the middle. And as you see, we bring more shadow into the image as well. We get that kind of fade look. And once we're happy with that, we can adjust the slider in the middle here as well to make it darker or lighter. I think we're gonna keep it like that. The next one here to the left, this is what can bring more of that fade into your black shadows within the image as well. So if we take this all the way to the left, you will remove that faded look to your color grading and to those black spots. But if we take it closer to the middle, you will get more shadows in your image. If you take a close look here, you will see that we get more fade to that dark spot right there. But we're gonna keep it like that. And we're actually gonna take this and drag it a little bit more up like that. And if we now take a look before and after, you can see that the video and the colors of the video is now more appealing to the eye. It looks a lot more natural and it looks a lot better. You can also adjust the contrast here to create a more faded look to your cinematic color grading if you want to do that by taking down towards the left side here. As you can see, we create some faded look to the image as well. Or you can take it up just a tiny notch if you want to add more contrast to your colors. So now that we've done all the sliders here, what you can do to bring more warmth into your color grading is to take the blue slider here, which is yellow and blue, and you can drag that over towards the left side. And by taking this slider over to the yellow side, you will make the image look warmer. You can take it over to the blue side if you want to cool down your colors as well and make the video look cooler. But we're gonna take it a little bit to the left here, so I think we're gonna keep it at 95. 0 0.95 and if we now go to the top here you can see before and after so we're now going to move over to the next one here and which is this and we're going to make the same green color grading to this as well but we're going to make it a little bit more cinematic with that faded look to the video as well so we're going to go into edit once more on this and we're going to add the original color presets and again, we can start from the bottom here and we can take the hue over to the right side around 450, 500. And after we change the hue, we go over to the shadow amount here once more and we drag that all the way to minus one. And on this one, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna take the vibrance up and we're gonna take the saturation down. We can still control a lot with the vibrance here. As you can see, when we take it down, there is not much color in the image. As we take it up, we will bring more colors to the uh, footage here. But we're gonna keep this uh, saturation here on 70, and we're gonna keep the uh, vibrance on 20. For the contrast, we can bring down the contrast right away to around 80. And on the levels here, again, we're gonna take the highlights and we're gonna bring it just a little bit up. This depends on the exposure of your video file when you shoot it though, but you can always bring it down if you need to do that. But I highly recommend that you shoot a little bit below uh, the plus two when you are shooting with a Sony camera. Ideally, you want to shoot when you have the exposure flashing on the plus two, but if you go down to 1.7, it's easier to color grade inside of LumaFusion because you can bring up some of that highlight inside LumaFusion as well. So we're gonna keep it like that. And again, we're gonna take on one of these two circles here and drag those towards the middle, like that. And we can now take the middle one here and drag to the left or to the right here. We can also take the left one here and bring a little bit up, but I see now that the video is a little bit dark, so we're gonna take the contrast and we're gonna bring just a little bit up here. Maybe take the brightness just a little bit, like, 0.05 and that we can go down to the gamma here and we can lighten that up by taking it over to 0.90 we can take the middle slider here as well just drag it a little bit up just like that and now let's take a look before and after 
and if you want to make the brown tones a little bit more brown reddish you can always take the red slider here and drag it over to the red side just like that so now that we're done with the second color grading we can go out to our timeline here and we can take a look at both of these two color gradings this one is a color pop and this one has a more cinematic look to it and this is without anything now let's move over and create one more and this is the popular teal and orange and there's uh, really easy to make teal and orange look cinematic as well so we're gonna go into edit on the last clip there and add another original color preset and again we're gonna go down to the bottom here and take the hue over to the left side this time we're going to take it over to around 500. And one more thing, you can always go back to the hue and change the hue once you've gone through the process here. But we're going to keep it at minus 510 for now and we can go back and adjust later if needed. And again, we're going to go over to shadow amount, take that down to a minus one. We can now go over to vibrance and saturation and we want to bring the saturation up and uh, we can uh, take the uh, vibrance up just a little bit as well and uh, we can move over to the sliders on top here so again we can take the exposure here the highlights just a tiny bit up and we can lower these towards the middle and we can drag it more to the middle there just something like that Take the levels and we can drag all the way to the left and uh, we can see what happens if we take the vibrance a little bit down here saturation a little bit down and something like that and what we can do now is to take the contrast and take it down to 0 0.90 we can go back to the red green and blue sliders here and we can take the blue and pull over to yellow we can take the hue again and we can drag it a little bit closer to 400 like that and uh, we can take the gamma as well and we can increase that just a little bit to 1.10 and now to add some more teal into this we can take the red and drag over towards the teal side here we can drag it down to 90 like that and now let's just take a look at before and after so this is before and this is after and the next thing is to take the brightness just a tiny notch up to uh, I think we're gonna go with uh, six and uh, we can take the middle slider here and drag a little bit up to make the image a little bit lighter so it's not that dark and the next thing we can do is to take the gamma and we can increase that to 1.20 so now let's take a look before and after and you can see that we have some orange ish in the in the trees here compared to the other color grading we did you can see it down here as well and especially if we look back here you can see that we have a little bit more of a teal color to the background here as well so you see now it's kind of flat and once we check this again you can see that we have more teal to this grading as well so now that we finished this color grading as well let's go out to our timeline here and this is uh, before anything applied and this is the teal and orange and this is the cinematic dark green brown color grading and this is the color pop so there we have three color gradings here and if you want to save these as a preset the only thing we do is to go into color and effects again and then on the original uh, color that we applied and we tap on the star here with the plus inside and we type whatever name that we want to type here and then we hit the start once more with the plus inside and that will save the preset to luma fusion and once that is saved you can go on and you can apply this color grading to a different clip in the future when you are working on any projects and you can simply go into the different sliders and you can change the uh, change the levels up here to make it uh, lighter darker and uh, 
stuff like that. You can also change the saturation and you can also change the hue. So when you apply this to your future clips, your future travel videos or videos that you make, the fastest workflow that you can have a video color preset inside of LumaFusion is to change the middle section here of the levels once you first made a preset and to change the saturation and vibrance here and then to also change the hue from the left to right, 0, 400 to minus 0, 400, and then you should have a really smooth workflow when you are color grading log profiles inside of LumaFusion. So there you go, that is the super easy way of editing S-Log color profiles inside of LumaFusion. Even Canon log profiles can be made this way. And uh, next time maybe we'll do some AGLG and uh, some other color profiles, maybe just a normal auto profile, auto mode on the notch and uh, see if we can make that auto thing a lot better as well. Maybe that is uh, a video for the future as well so with that said i think that is the end of this video and also as always if you are new to this channel make sure to check out that subscribe button that would be really appreciated and uh, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and i see you guys in the next one